Hey guys, April Misak here with Jeeps on the Run. Today, my husband and I are gonna do a review of the Series 3 Grand Wagoneer. Um, we have a great relationship with Ray Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Fox Lake, so if you have any questions or um, interest, reach out to us. If you're interested in this boat, please um, click the link above and see our sister channel, Midwest Adventure Life. So behind me is the Series 3 Grand, Grand Wagoneer. Uh, the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer are both the same size. When they first came out, there was a mis misinterpretation that they were going to be two sizes. One was going to be Tahoe and one was going to be suburban sized, if you will. Uh, they're both the same size. Uh, they're basically the real difference between a Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer is features and options that they come with. There's a grand, uh, there's a great difference between the two, um, but for as far as looks and size, they are equal. This vehicle is built off of the Ram chassis. It gets a lot of the same structural as the Ram. Uh, the difference is the Ram does have a solid rear axle where the Wagoneer has independent rear suspension, which is gonna give you that much more refined ride that you would expect out of a luxury SUV versus a Ram. The Grand Wagoneer starts at about $106,000. Uh, this one here is right about $112,000 with its equipment that it has. This is the Series 3. The difference throughout the series, again, is you're going to find mostly in what it's equipped with. Uh, adaptive cruise control, power running boards, uh, cooler in the center console, uh, night vision. So again, all of the, the, the real difference between Series 1, 2, and 3 are its options. The first thing you'll notice about the Grand Wagoneer is actually how it greets you when you approach it. At night, it's uh, actually impressive. Uh, the, the boards light up, it says Wagoneer on the ground, um, and, and the, the lighting of it is really impressive. We'll show, we'll show a little view of that. But as you approach it, with the keys in your pocket, you'll notice the mirrors pull out, the running boards will deploy, and the vehicle will unlock itself um, pretty much as you before you get to it. Uh, mirrors will come out and vehicle is is unlocked never even touch the keys it, it literally greets you as you as you come towards the vehicle if it were nighttime you would notice a uh, wagoneer along the ground uh, the headlights have this sequential glow to it as well as the taillights super super impressive um, from an exterior standpoint i think they did a really nice job the power running boards look like they're molding on the on the bottom of the vehicle uh, You've got awesome choice of wheels here. Um, the front is very bold. It's got a little bit of the, the bold boxy look. It, some people think it looks a little chunky, maybe it was a word. I think it draws a little of its heritage from the Grand Wagoneer that we, we learned to love in the 80s. Uh, obviously much more refined. I remember bouncing around in my uncle's Grand Wagoneer when I was a kid. This is, uh, this is incredible. Uh, a six foot two person can sit in that third row and be really, really comfortable. If you come forward a little bit, um, you know you can see the lines. You can add, you can add luggage roof uh, racks to the top here. Um, you've got the flush door handles with really no access for uh, for keys. There are panels you can open up. Uh, there's a couple Easter eggs which we'll show in the video a little later. You got a little seven slot here button that you can barely notice uh, for to indicate the seven slots in the grill. But they did a really nice job. You know, they, they took a couple, this is, the comparable vehicles to this are your Cadillac Escalade and your, and your Lincoln Navigator. If you're comparing this to a Tahoe saying, hey, this is priced way out of range for a Tahoe, you're comparing the wrong vehicle. Sure, it's Tahoe size. We'll get into size a little bit later. It's actually a little bit bigger, but you're not, the, a Tahoe is not a comparable vehicle to this. Uh, Jeep went outside of their element and they created this luxury Grand Wagoneer. Uh, it actually doesn't even say Jeep on it, but one or two small places, it is badged as a Grand Wagoneer. And a total side note, but I love how they are badging everything with the American flag. Jeep is known as the most patriotic vehicle manufacturer uh, on the market, and I think it's pretty obvious. You've got your bold look, says Wagoneer across the front. Uh, Jeep kept their, their traditional seven slot heritage grill. Um, there's rumor that those seven slots are because it's been on seven continents. Uh, we, I guess we ultimately don't know why there are seven slots. So if you have a response to that answer, let's hear the real reason. Um, but you're, you're matched with the premium LED uh, headlights. You've got your, 
your chrome tow hooks up here, which is part of a tow package, um, which increases the tow capacity of this. You've got your parking assist. You've got your adaptive cruise control sensors, which are there and up on the windshield. Um, and in here, you also have a night vision camera, which we'll talk about, but just a great looking front end of this vehicle. I think Jeep, Jeep did an, an awesome job. So let's dive inside and I'll show you what it is like to drive a $113,000 Grand Wagoneer. So inside the Grand Wagoneer, if you're not wowed, um, you're in the wrong vehicle, I guess. This thing is loaded with features, options, the amount of screens, uh, the wood. Um, you know, when you go ahead and start the vehicle, uh, you'll hear the roar of that 6.4 liter motor. What we should mention too is, this is probably the last year of that 6.4 liter motor. They are gonna switch to a twin turbo inline six hurricane motor, uh, which is coming out to increase um, fuel economy and it's still supposed to be equally as powerful. So fingers crossed on that, but I think the inline six motor has proven itself in some of the older Wranglers and, and Cherokees. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sad about that, uh, but the vehicle is unbelievable. Uh, you've got, uh, incredibly um, comfortable seats. You can adjust them about any way down to moving this headrest forward and back, up, down, everything is electronic. The bolsters in the seat, the lumbar. If you look here on this uh, screen in front of us, the seats can, uh, you, you can adjust your thigh bolster, your back bolster, your lumbar in and out, up and down. If you go here, you can, pick massaging seats. Uh, not only can you massage the bottom and the back, you can decide what type of massage you want, waterfall, lower back. And these massaging seats are actually very impressive. Um, this is not a gimmick. This actually feels pretty darn good. So your adjustments here are, are impeccable. If you move up to here, you've got, you can adjust your back, your lower back, your upper, you can move the, the whole seat forward and back. And much like a lot of BMWs had, you can actually extend the base of your seat where it comes forward uh, under, your, under your thighs and under your knee. And of course, you can set your memory seats. There's profiles you can set. The profile will remember uh, audio stations, heating and cooling temperatures. It will remember you. And as you approach the vehicle, like we told you before, and you get inside, it will welcome you to the vehicle. Welcome, Mike, it will say, and it will, it will hold all those settings to you. It knows that it's you entering the vehicle. So the features on here are, are unbelievable. Uh, the dash is completely customizable. You've got up to five different screens. It'll show you the ride height. It will show you uh, miles per gallon. Uh, you can change it to show you the angle of the vehicle, um, the, you know, the, the angle of your steering wheel, there are, there are countless things here, and it will also show you uh, XM radio, uh, and you can even, uh, we'll get into a little deeper here, we'll talk about the night vision and, and what it shows you as well. So in night vision mode, which we're gonna show on the screen here, it detects temperature. So if you're going down a dark road and there's a deer in the corner, uh, it will detect that, and it will show on the screen. It will actually highlight something of higher temperature, something that's probably living, with a yellow uh, indicator. You can even set it to where it will alert you if it, in, if it picks up something on the side of the road. So you don't actually even have to watch the, uh, the night vision, but it will alert you and say, hey, there's something of interest over here that's catching my attention. So think about those, those dark roads with deer, you know, deer out in the, in the perimeter. This thing will actually pick it up and alert you of that before it may, may become a, an issue. So coming back down to the screen, these are completely customizable. You can put navigation here. You can put whatever you want on these, uh, on these widgets. Uh, the navigation will even show you fuel prices at the gas station as you approach. You know, Here's an easy way to adjust your cooled seats. This is one thing I think is a little weird and misleading. This zone, so you can have your cooled seats, and right now it's on the bottom and the back. There's just the back, there's just the bottom. Again, there's both. At quick glance, some people think that that's your heated seat that's on. It's not, that's just the zone. In my opinion, that should have been amber or a different color other than red. There's your heated seats, there's your cooled seats, but the zone indication is always red. So just something to keep in mind. Another weird feature I'm gonna point out here is if you come to your um, 
if you come to your, your, your HVAC controls, one thing that people notice, or I've seen comments saying, hey, my, my AC won't go up, it's only going down, right? Or same with my blower, it only, it only goes from one to off. So I guess it may not be intuitive, but down, if you would like it warmer, you need to just pull up on the button. Same with this, if you'd like the fan speed to go up, you pull up on the button. But I've seen a lot of comments saying that their, their Wagoneer has a defective control system because they think this is down and this side is up. But the real reality is you need to lift up on these to make them go higher, down to go down. So hopefully that's, uh, if, you, if you already own the vehicle, maybe that saves you, uh, saves you a headache. Let's talk about the screens. Uh, there is, I believe, like 70 some odd inches of screens. The passenger has a screen and you turn on the passenger screen by pushing this button right here. Now, as a driver, I cannot see that screen. It's kind of got a polarized lens on it. So from my seat, I cannot see that screen. It cannot distract me. Now, as a passenger, you have a lot of control over there. You can watch your own movies. You can connect your own Bluetooth headphones and listen to your own music. Now, you can also be going down the road and searching for locations to eat or where you want to go or maybe in your next destination where typically you can't do as a driver because you're in motion. The passenger can be do all the navigation they want over there. Once they find the location or find what they want to do, they have an option of sending that that destination or whatever it may be over the driver you'll get a you'll get a message on this middle screen saying would you like to accept the navigation you hit accept and it will navigate through here as well as show you right in your steering wheel so the passenger has a ton of control and a ton of options while the the driver can concentrate on the road even if you get a text message you have an option of sending that text message view over to that screen so the passenger can read it obviously it'll still read it to you verbally uh, and everything else. Uh, the other thing is you can control everything through voice. You control your HVAC through voice control. The voice control features uh, are on point as well. This does have adaptive cruise control. You can set your speed. Uh, we will we'll take you for a ride. We'll show you that. The, uh, the adaptive cruise control will also manage the steering wheel. It's a little better than just active lane management, which you're probably familiar with on other Chrysler and Dodge Jeep Ram products, where it kind of ping pongs you between your lane. Uh, this does a pretty good job of keeping you centered in your lane. If you own a vehicle like this, odds are you probably have a family or uh, maybe you've got little kids. If you go to your screen and you click vehicle, you'll see an option called fam cam. Uh, we've got Charlie in the back seat here. So if I want to see what Charlie's doing, I can click on his head there and boom, there's what Charlie's doing. This is really actually beneficial. Think of you at a rear facing car seat. You could see if your, your child was sleeping or what they were doing without doing that old turn around and uh, and see what's going on behind you. So you can actually click on an, in on every individual seat. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on Charlie for a second. So <clears throat> when Charlie's misbehaving, you can go ahead and push this button that says second row headrest fold and you can knock him out. So the reason for that is, is when you're looking backwards, um, the third one's already down, but you can, you can kind of see, you can get a better view uh, of what's going on behind you. It's okay, Charlie. But if, if you do have the mirror, um, I don't know if you can see this, we'll zoom in on it. This mirror is digital. So typically, this is probably not gonna show you, but this is what you would normally would expect, your normal mirror where the headrest would block you. If you come up to digital mode, um, you can actually adjust this quite a bit too. You can, you can move it up and down. Um, with the, uh, the breadth brightness, and you can actually move it up and down depending what you'd like and adjust the camera in the back. So that's actually a, a pretty awesome feature. If you've got a car load of people, um, you no longer are just looking at the rear view mirror seeing, seeing their heads, you can truly see what's going on behind you. Speaking of cameras, if you come back to the vehicle and you've got your surround camera set up, uh, this is like watching HTV, guys, HDTV. I mean, you can literally see everything. Um, and check out our other video. We talk about how you can use this uh, to hitch up a boat there. We've got behind us here this two, two, uh, two, 225 uh, Yamaha X. And if you click this power button, or this zoom button, zooms you right in on the hitch. I'm almost positive this zoom feature is part of the trailer tow package. So if you don't have that, that would be why. The other thing that put this Grand Wagoneer on the map, so to speak, or was a very cool feature when it first came alive, was the infamous um, 
fireplace mode. So you come into the apps and you're gonna hit relax mode. This is kind of cool, kind of cheesy, whatever you may think, but. So you've got a fireplace behind the driver's uh, console. You've got one here and I can't see it again, but the passenger can see, uh, can see their fireplace as well. Kind of just a, a surreal, chill kind of thing. And again, you can change these to different modes. Um, and it's kind of cool. And at night, uh, when these modes are on, there's there's LED glow throughout the, the dash here, throughout the doors, in the floor, and as well as the back seat. And those LED colors actually change based on uh, what scenery you have here. But you can also... You can also change the uh, the LED colors here uh, as well. If you click ambient color, and again, this will show you at night, but these top ones are what the color is gonna show under the dash here as indicated on the illustration, and the bottom one you can change. So you can change these independently if you want two different colors. Uh, if you hit sync, uh, they will always remain the same as the top and bottom together. So if you want to independently change them, you unsync them and then you can control them independently. Kind of a cool little feature. Uh, it, it, is, it is a really nice touch. It lights up all through here, all under here. Um, just kind of adds to the whole driving experience at night. At night, this thing is unbelievable with the lighting uh, and just the details. They really hit a home run with this thing in, uh, as far as evening goes. So the first time you own this, when you drive it at night, you're gonna notice all these little things that uh, you didn't notice as you drove it off the lot. So focusing down here in this, this center console area, it demands a lot of attention. You've got this really nice uh, control shifter. You can change your, your modes from rock, sand, off-road, sport, automatic. This is where you control your, your air ride. Um, a lot of controls down here. If you open this up, this will shut off the screen, lift it up. You've got 12, uh, 12 volt port. You've got an HDMI passenger plug here. So you can plug in a Xbox or TV or whatever you want to plug into here and the, the passenger can have their phone over there. You obviously got your, your, your multimedia jacks. And then down here is a wireless charger. You can set your phone in there and let everything just sync through, uh, you know, Apple and Android Auto, which it does wirelessly. Uh, so that's kind of a, just a nice area to put stuff in. Um, it did a nice job. You don't even know it's there. So moving back here, you obviously got cup holders, straightforward, hold some nice big cups, um, nice wood grain. Moving into here on this Grand Wagoneer Series 3 again, you've got a cooler. If you push this, turn this on, uh, this gets... This, this gets cold. I mean, you can you can really keep keep your lunch cold or whatever you want. And I did notice, even when the vehicle is off, it does stay cold. So uh, I'm not sure if that turns off at a certain amount of time, uh, but even when the vehicle off is off, that did stay cold, I did notice. Uh, again, that's probably, uh, I know the Escalades have had that for a number of years, but even if you don't want to use it as a cooler, it obviously doubles as, uh, as storage. So we'll move into the back seat. We'll talk about leg room and what, what it's like to sit in the back seat of the Grand Wagoneer. So here we are, we're sitting in the back seat of the Grand Wagoneer and uh, we got Charlie next to me. Hi. Um, this is what you would expect from a luxury SUV. I've got my own, I got my own vent here. Uh, we can turn on our climate on our own. There's a screen here, which we'll show you. Uh, turn on our own climate. Obviously you got your own dome light, you got your own shiitake handles here and here and we've got a uh you know we've got visors um you we've got heated seats uh cooled seats too right charlie yep, yep. turn those babies on it's hot out we've got storage back here with more hdmi uh and not hdmi i'm sorry more usb uh and USB C controls huge storage i mean you could fit in there i think right no yeah maybe a few years ago uh huge storage <clears throat> The driver's seat is, is, is as far back as it can go. I, when I drive, I like, I like to be away from the dash. So I was up front last. It is as far back as it can go. If you can video here where my knees are, I'm six foot two. I'm not short. I am comfortable. I am, I've, got, I've got plenty of room. Now, having said that, this seat does go forward and does go back. It also, as Charlie is demonstrating, reclines and when, when it reclines not only does the back recline look at the base of the seat so as we pull forward the base of the seat actually reclines this is 
comfortable. This is this is like you're sitting in the front seat. My feet are actually extended right now and I am reclined. Now to be fair, we'll leave this reclined and we'll go in the third row and see what it feels like in a second. But as far as leg room back here, um, it's awesome. So I know this is kind of a dumb little feature, but I don't feel like all vehicles have this. The kids are always like, hey, can you unlock the car? I can't get out, I can't get out. Well, they have their own power door lock button back here. Obviously there is a child uh, lock protection as well, but that's for another thing. And this thing is loaded with speakers. The Macintosh sound system in this thing is unbelievable. If you thought the Harman Kardon that you found in the Wagoneers and the, and the Grand Cherokees before was awesome, you got nothing on this Macintosh system. It is the chef's kiss. Yeah. So as promised, I still got the seat reclined. Now, again, six foot two, the easiest way to get in the back, push this button and the whole thing just tilts forward, slides forward. I didn't have to make any adjustments at all. I can even reach and close the door. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the seat right back where it was. Now, it's not reclined all the way. Oh, I'm cheating. So hold on. Let's recline it all the way. I'm gonna show you what it is. So, it's fine. So, again, now, is this the most comfortable spot right now with this reclined all the way? No, but recline this. these recline as well. And again, I'm six foot two and I'm not uncomfortable. And the reality is if you had seven people in here, this person isn't gonna be reclined like that. And if he is, you know, I don't know how much of a friend he is, right? So at any rate, the, the leg room back here is still really, really impressive. Uh, again, I've got my own vent. I've got my own way I can electronically control the, the recline. I've got my own USBs. I've got cup holders. I even have a sunroof back here. Well, the glass doesn't open, the shade does. Um, it is really, really, really roomy. Well, the Tahoe isn't a direct comparison as far as luxury goes. As far as size goes, the Tahoe for the rear seat, third passenger legroom is 34.9 inches. This vehicle is 36 0.6 inches, so you do get a couple extra inches of legroom. And we'll talk about cargo space in a few seconds. We're gonna go into the back and we're gonna show you how to use the cargo and how much cargo space you have. But interior road trip, you can haul up to almost 10,000 pounds with this vehicle, have your family of seven with you, and hauling your boat, going wherever you need to go, bringing whatever you need to bring with you. Very, very impressive. So let's talk about cargo space as we wrap up the all new Grand Wagoneer Series 3. To exit, there's a button right here, and I'm out of the vehicle. We'll meet you in the back. All right, so here we are in the back of the Grand Wagoneer. We're gonna show you how to put the seats down, and we're gonna talk about the amount of cargo space you have. So this right now, the seats are up. This is your area behind the third row. Go ahead, Charlie, and make this, put everything flat here. So while he's doing that, we're gonna talk about behind the third row. You In, in the Tahoe, to give you an example, you have 25.5 cubic feet when the third row is up. In the Jeep, you have 27.4 cubic feet. So you still have more than the Tahoe. In total, you have 70.9 total cubic feet. Now, just to give you an idea, this is a little bigger than a Tahoe, but smaller than a Suburban. Uh, a Suburban, you have 93.8. But again, this is not a comparable size to a Suburban. The Grand Wagoneer L is on its way out, and that will be more Suburban sized. Uh, but to give you an idea, I would think more Tahoe, Escalade, non-ESV, Navigator sized. But you have a ton of room. Uh, that seat didn't go all the way down because we, we, we had it pulled forward, but no less, you can, you can see your total cargo space here. So go ahead and try, you can bring all the seats back up. Again, you can bring them all up electronically, one touch. Um, even, even the middle row will come up on its own. So that's the rundown on the Grand Wagoneer Series 3. Uh, keep in mind, if you purchase this from a Grand Wagoneer or Wagoneer certified dealership, you get a lot of extra things. There's 10 commandments. You can have it picked up for service. Uh, you can do, uh, they'll pick up drop off. You get, you get white glove treatment. So I suggest purchasing something like this from Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Fox Lake. Transparent pricing, uh, they have, they are Wagoneer certified. They have Wagoneer ambassadors, trained employees specifically on these vehicles. The dealerships are under a magnifying glass to be able to sell this style of vehicle and be considered 
a Wagoneer certified dealership. Not all are. Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Fox Lake is. Thanks for watching this incredibly long video. We hope you like it. We hope you subscribe uh, and follow us along for other Jeep related uh, videos and follow our sister channel for other fun outdoor adventures, Midwest Adventure Life. So thanks again, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, leave a comment below. What do you guys think of this vehicle? We'll see you out on the road.